Did you know that modern professing Christians refuse to suffer? That's how you can tell that they're fake. I'm going to do a very interesting study today. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Um, there's a lot of fake professing Christians out there, people that say that they're saved, that they're, they believe in Jesus, Jesus is their Savior, they go to church, they're a quote-unquote Christian, and they're lost. They're not actually saved. And the main reason I know that is because I used to be one of them. Very good church going, uh, raised going to church, all the, you know, the whole thing. Um, and I was false. And I pray if you're out there and you're a professing Christian that you would examine yourself in this study and think, am I one of these fake Christians? Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23 says, Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray if there's false Christians out there that they would watch this whole thing, that they would not be like the people in the end times that will not endure sound doctrine, but I pray that they would listen and seriously consider themselves and that they would use this Bible, this King James Bible, sort of as a mirror to look into their own lives and determine if they are genuinely saved or not because there's nothing that is more important than knowing where you're going to go when you die. And I pray that they would really consider what's said in this study. I ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, now, look at the verse. Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Um, is prophesying negative or positive? It can be negative, but most people in modern churches, most modern professing Christians, they will use the things of promises of heaven, promises of joy and peace and whatever. They'll take things out of the scriptures that apply to saved people like me, and they'll say, it applies to everyone. God loves you. God, There's unconditional love with God. There's all these great, God has a great plan for you. He wants to give you your best life now. See, God wants to bless you. He's going to do all this stuff. You're prophesying and you're taking things from scripture and you're trying to prophesy in the name of Jesus. It doesn't say that the prophecies came true. Notice that. Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? They're trying to prove that they're genuine Christians to Jesus. They're standing before him and he says, depart from me. I never knew you. You're not saved. Again, I've had people kick me over this, you know, on this subject for many years now. They'll say, where does the Bible say that there's any such thing as a false Christian? Well, here's a good place right here. Matthew chapter 7. I'm coming in your name. What does that mean? If you're in the name of Jesus Christ, then you are a Christian. And there are people that come in the name of Jesus, and yet they aren't saved. The Lord doesn't know them. You know, I did a sermon many years ago. You chose Jesus, but did Jesus choose you? Has Jesus received you as his sinner? That's another one I did a number of years ago. There are conditions that must be met for the Lord to save you. And it's not good works. You have to understand that. You drop your self-righteous pride. You understand, I'm a sinner. I am worthy of death. I am worthy of going to hell. And I believe, put my faith in the written word of God, the King James Bible. Not your new versions that come from the Vatican. I put my faith in what this book says, the greatest book that's ever been written in the history of man. Well, what about... just do, do, do. Ants, do you submit to this book? Well, I'm going to come up with a bunch of philosophical things that I can say and a bunch of questions and whatever else. Why? To talk yourself out of salvation? I'm reading to you from this book. Why wouldn't you submit to it? Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. Is that a positive thing? Sure. Absolutely. Oh, look at me. I've cast out devils. I'm a great Christian. I've been able to cast out many devils and I can prophesy and I can do all these great things. Is there suffering involved? Not really. How about the next one? And in thy name done many wonderful works. See, this is them speaking to God. They're not, this isn't God saying to them, I know that you've tried to do prophesying in my name. I know that you've tried to cast out devils in my name and done many wonderful works. No, this is them. This is the way that they defend their life. 
Have you run into false Christians out there, those of you that are truly born again? And they'll bring up this stuff? I know I'm saved. Why? Well, I go to the Methodist church and we do a lot of good things for people. I mean, we've helped people. Are you helping people? We do soul reaching out uh, things, soul winning re outreaches, or, and we do spaghetti dinners. And we, we feed the poor. We clothe the poor and, and uh, we, we do some really good stuff. We go around and we mow people's yards. We do many wonderful works. Are you suffering for it? People cast out your name as evil and other things we'll be seeing here in a little bit. It's weird. They'll justify themselves by their lack of suffering for Jesus Christ. Well, I'm a good person. I've done all these nice things. And it, they're so self-deluded that it gets to the point where they're actually doing it to God. How about that? God, the perfect judge, he can see everything. And he already rejected them. It's not that they got up there and the Lord said, okay, saved or lost, what are you? Well, Lord, I'm proving it to you that I'm a saved Christian because I've done... No. Verse 21, um, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And it goes down through. Verse 23, what does the Lord say? And here's the real kicker. Here's where you get the modern professing Christians and the Lord just nails them right to the wall. He knows their thoughts. He judges their secrets. He knows what they really are. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. It's not I knew you once and then you lost it because you didn't live a perfect, holy, obedient life or something. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Where do you work at? A place that gives you what? Wages? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Book of Romans. Huh. I wonder if there's a tie into what's going on here. People that work iniquity. You know how you can spot a modern Christian? Here's how it works. They'll do many wonderful works on this hand, but over here, They'll work inequity. I go to church on Sunday, but I go to the movie theater on Saturday night. I go to Bible study Wednesday evening, but I go down to the bar on Friday night. And I go to the movie theater. I go to sporting events and other places where there's wickedness and profanity and all the other things. And you can just fill in the blank. There's all kinds of wicked things that workers of iniquity enjoy. But when the Holy Spirit moves in and you genu genuinely are born again, all of a sudden, the things of earth grow strangely dim, as the old hymn says. Hmm. You start to look and you say, you know what? I don't enjoy this stuff anymore like I once did. I really don't want to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. I feel like I need to reprove them. Hmm. And what happens when you reprove the unfruitful works of darkness? Uh, you start to suffer. Philippians chapter 3. Go to Philippians chapter 3. I'll show you the truth of what's really going on. You see, if you want to uh, really define what a modern church is, I can define it very easily for you. It's all, it's all um, centered around the thing of not suffering. We need to eliminate suffering. Padded pews. Gone are the days when you had to sit on a hard wooden bench. Oh, that's just unacceptable. Gone are the days when Christians would meet out in the woods like this. There's, that's just not very nice. And I want to have padded pews. And we need to have air conditioning. And we need to have all this other stuff. Uh, we need counseling services in our church buildings. We need to have life, life enhancement services. To, God has special plans for you. And all these other things to enhance our life. So that we don't have to suffer. How about uh, worldly styles? They come into the church buildings looking just like the world out there. Just like the lost world. There's no dress standards anymore. Because otherwise, you know, if you did, that would mean there would be some uh, suffering there. How about community outreach events? We're good people. Many wonderful works, you know, because we do suppers and we clothe the poor and we have a food pantry and we do all these other good things. 
How about feminars? <laughs> Had to write that one down. Feminars. Oh, they have the women you know, speaker. She comes in and she talks to the ladies of the church and everything. And they have a, the phone you know, chain thing and the prayer chain. And it's actually just a cover for gossip. Did you hear about so-and-so? You know, well, let's pray for them. And whatever. Yeah, you're gossiping. Um, how about uh, effeminate hirelings? The feminars kind of rub off on the men. And then the men become effeminate. And they're up there and they're, I can't preach against this. And I don't want to preach against that because it would offend my wife and the other women of the church. How about contemporary Christian music? There's another good one. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to hear songs about the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Onward Christian soldiers. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own His cause or blush to speak His name? I, no, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear about those things. And, and uh, it is well with my soul. Written by Horatio Spafford that lost his whole family except for his wife. I... Uh, uh, you see? Better bring that CCM in there. How about the new Bible versions? Can't stand to read an old archaic King James Bible. These and thou's and thy's and beholdeth and all this other. Oh, I just, uh, I can't take it. And, uh. Well, you know, it's funny because Jesus talked about if a man's ashamed of me and of my words, and this adulterous and sinful generation, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh, you know, in the clouds with the angels or getting the verse messed up. I don't have it written here. But you can look it up. You're not supposed to be ashamed of God's Word. Well, how could you be ashamed of God's Word if it sounds just like the lost people? Uh, no, God's Word, the real one, sounds different than the way people talk. They say, oh, but actually, <clears throat> I think that the, God's Word is the Greek and the Hebrew. Really? Um, how could you be ashamed of that? People don't even understand it. How about tax rebates for tithing? We don't want to suffer. Hey, you can give your tithes and offerings here to the church and you can write it off. Get a nice little break on your taxes. That's always a good thing. How about huge immense amounts of financial debt that the modern church buildings are in? They're good on that one. How about ecumenical, the whole ecumenical movement? Let's not have any strife between Catholics and Protestants or other religions and things. Let's all just get along together. Tolerance of sexual perversion. Do the modern churches do that? Modern Christians, do they get into that? Mm -hmm. And the list could go on and on. Lots more we could talk about. But let's read here in Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3 verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Are you ready to have loss in your life? When you get saved, when you get born again, you follow the word of God, you will suffer loss. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the ex excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Can you say that? If you're a professing Christian, have, have you ever gotten to the place where you look at your past life, where there's a changed life that happens? And you look at your lost life and you say, oh, just a bunch of dung. All that stuff I did, all the good works and everything, the prophesying in his name and casting out devils in his name, if you've tried to do that, uh, not saying to do that, but I'm just saying, you know, the miracles were there, the signs were given to the Jews, that's a whole other issue. But all the good things that you used to do, do you look back on that at some point in your life and say, what a bunch of dung. Suffered the loss of all that stuff. It didn't even mean anything. I was doing that all for myself because I didn't want to suffer as a Christian. Have you gotten to that point? Oh, well, no, no. I've, I mean, then you better check yourself. Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. It's very important. And be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, you want to know Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. See, modern Christianity, it's not about suffering. Modern Christianity is, I want suffering taken out of my life. Being made conformable unto his death. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 that you're to present your body a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. It's reasonable. You're supposed to die on the cross along with Jesus. Bury the old man that you can be raised up as a new man in Christ Jesus. Verse 11, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. That's what matters. How you attain to the resurrection of the dead. How's it going to look for you in judgment? Better think about that. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter two verse eight. We'll see some more stuff about suffering here as a Christian. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer, even unto bonds. You imagine the modern the average modern professing Christian facing prison? For what they believe, <laughs> I highly doubt it. They'd be running away. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. That is referring to the Jews. It is not talking about uh, Christians that are elect, but they haven't gotten saved yet. It's not talking about that. That's a nonsense way to look at that verse. Verse 11, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. You know, it's an interesting thing. Let me read verse 13. It is, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Verse 12 is talking about, if we deny him, he also will deny us. It's talking about reigning. He'll deny us reign. Because verse 13 goes on to say, he cannot deny himself. All right, he's not going to kick you out of the body of Christ if you don't suffer. It's just that you have to suffer to get into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of right or the kingdom of heaven, excuse me, which is a reference in Matthew chapter 7 to the coming thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. And that's why people that come along and they say, "Lord, Lord," and we've done all these wonderful things, and the Lord says, "You're not getting in. You're not going into the kingdom of heaven." But if you suffer, it's not about doing wonderful works. If you suffer and have that fellowship with me because of the sufferings that you've gone through, get up there to heaven and and Lord says, uh, so how did you live for me down there? Well, I just kept it hidden the whole time. You know, like Superman or something. You just kind of hide your, you know, the big C on your, you know, shirt or something for a Christian. And you just kind of keep it hidden and, you know, sneak around. I hope nobody understands that I'm a Christian. Well, then you didn't suffer. You won't reign with Jesus Christ. You won't have anything in common with Him. God wants you to suffer. He expects you to suffer for Him. You go to these church buildings and they want to eliminate suffering. Well, maybe you shouldn't go to a church building. Maybe if you'd actually read the King James Bible, you would see that nobody went to church. You're in church all the time. For God's sake, don't go to church. Watch that study if you haven't seen it yet. Another one of my outdoor sermons. Um, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 through 18. The Bible says here, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, conditional clause, always remember, if, there is a conditional clause. It's putting, you have to do this. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. There has to be suffering there. Well, I'll get up to heaven and I'll be, uh, Lord, uh, look at all the great things I've done. I built six churches and I led uh, 20,000 people to, the, to you and I you know, led them in prayers. And I mean, they didn't, you know, continue, but I, 
they got saved according to you know the, our church's constitution and um i've done all these good things i recorded uh 12 different albums and um uh we fed uh i think it was right around 500,000 people over the years and uh, i was i was there to i had the apron on and i served spaghetti to the people the homeless people at the homeless shelter lord says <laughs> bunch of dung <sighs> take that stuff away get it away from here you get up there to heaven and the lord says uh you stand before the Lord, judgment seat of Christ, and you go, oh, it's good to be here. <laughs> and the Lord says, uh, let's see about those works of yours that you did for me, the things that you did after you get saved. Um, okay. Lord looks and he says, co-workers made fun of you a lot, didn't they? Yeah. I don't miss that. That was pretty rough. Yeah. Um, see your... Uh, Marriage broke up because you stood for me, my word. Boy, that was rough going through that divorce, yeah. Um, had some family members turn against you too, didn't you? Yeah, I remember that. I remember they threatened to kill me. They threatened to call the police. Um, my mother screamed right in my face, said she wished she'd never had me. That was rough. How about that uh, church you used to attend? Yeah, I remember that. Uh, went there to the pastor and uh, yeah, he said I was asking too many questions and I was causing division and sowing division and I tried to ask him another question and he yelled at me and told me to get out of the church. And I um, had people from that church and they were my friends and, and they turned on me too. And <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm not laughing at the situation. It's painful to go through it. But I'm, I laugh because, you know, it's just kind of the... Uh, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The Lord's up there and he says, uh, yeah, you went through some stuff. You got kicked around for my name, didn't you? And you say, yeah. The Lord says, uh, I got kicked around a bunch too down there on the earth. I saw what you went through for me. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Come on in. Welcome. That's a pretty good honor. God of heaven, commending you for suffering. Whatever you have to go through, brethren, it's uh, not going to be amount, amount to much when you get to heaven. All the people that laughed at you, all the people that made fun of you, everything else. Maybe someday it'll be the soldiers that uh, put you to death, the soldiers that spit in your face or beat you up or whatever else. I don't know what we're going to have to go through. I have no idea. But someday it's not going to mean anything. You won't say, I just have to quit. You'll say, well, I'm sure, I glad I, I'm sure glad I didn't quit. And finally, 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. Verse 14 through 19. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. There are some people that like to speak evil of Jesus Christ. Have you met them? I have a few times. They speak evil of Jesus because you're standing for Jesus. On their part, he is speaking evil of, but on your part, he's glorified. The Lord will pay you back for that. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Don't get messing around with the world and then end up, you suffer for that. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, what, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Don't worry about the suffering, brethren. It's going to come. It's going to be there. 
And you're supposed to be happy when it happens. It's not always easy, especially when it's your health. Um, that can get pretty rough. I had a really bad headache yesterday, and I don't get them very much, but uh, I had some bad sleep. That led to the bad headache. And uh, there's a lot of times I, I, have, I get spiritual attacks throughout the night, and it's horrible, and I can't sleep, and horrible dreams, and all this other stuff. And I'm praying and, you know, fighting spiritual warfare stuff back and forth. Then I get up, and I'm just walking around. Oh, okay, I have to get this done. I have to answer this letter and try to get this thing done. And, uh, you know, I need to do this. I need to email that person. And, th you know, <laughs> there's lots of stuff to do. Then you go through the pain and whatever. And, and um, I'll tell you, one of the hardest things to do is sing a hymn, praising the Lord when you're really feeling sick. Boy, it's rough. Because, you know, it's more tempting to say, oh, why, God? I don't understand why I have to go through this pain. Could you please take this away? And what can I do? And whatever else. Um, but there's suffering. But I see modern Christianity, there's not a lot of suffering. It's mostly fake. I see modern professing Christians, and uh, they go to rather worldly places on their vacations. Um, they act like the world. Uh, I've seen modern professing Christians, and they'll brag about how God has just blessed them so much. And then you find out it was actually an insurance policy, and that's how they were able to get their nice house or whatever else. Um, you know, I went to the bank, and I got this huge big debt, and look how God's blessed me with this house. Uh, God didn't bless you with the house. The mortgage did. Uh, the bank did there. Um, I've seen it. You know, and when I first got saved, boy, I thought, you know, the church... The Christian church is about that big. And then I started to realize, oh, these people reject the Word of God. And these people, they're, you know, thinking that others are saved that aren't saved. And, and they listen to the wrong kind of music that's condemned in Scripture. And they're this and they're that. And they're, these are watching movies and these are doing, you know, this. And this guy, I thought he was saved, but he cheated on his wife. And he just completely left his wife and went to some young woman and, or, you know, whatever. And you, and all of a sudden, the body of Christ is just this little, tiny, small number. And you think, wow, I uh, wonder what's going on there. And then you read the scriptures, and it's, uh, yeah, there's very few that are actually saved. Jesus Christ talked about the way to heaven being very narrow, uh, like a little tiny, narrow path going that way. Not the big, broad, super highway with most people on it. And uh, you have to get to the place where you realize that. Um, I was a professing Christian, uh, baptized as a baby, dedicated, you know, well, I shouldn't say baptized as a baby, but I was dedicated to the Lord as a baby, baptized when I was a young boy, after I'd made my decision to get saved in Sunday school when I was, I think, eight years old or something like that, seven or eight years old. Uh, I forget, it's been so long ago, 48 now, so uh, <laughs> a lot has happened in my life. And I don't remember all the details perfectly and exactly, but um, I was a professing Christian. And I lived like the world, and I looked like the world and everything else, but I was a good guy, and, and I did many wonderful works. I went on mission trips. We went door to door, and we passed out hygiene kits and things, and we would witness to the people and, and all this other stuff. And I built gymnasium floor at another place. We poured the concrete floor for the children out there in the jungles of Costa Rica, and... and um, you know, we did a lot of really nice stuff. Built onto the mission house, and I went on mission trips to to Vermont as a little boy, and and uh, we helped to build, you know, paint the church building there, and we did a lot of good things, and and um, you know, lots of good, wonderful works. But you know, I came to the place where I realized um, if I had to stand before the Lord right now, I think He would say, "I never knew you," because I don't really know Him, and I can't really relate to this book. I read the people about the people in this book, and I just think. I don't really understand that. But then I got saved. Came to the Lord truly broken and I said, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven when I die and I need to know. I believe your word and I have the right one. King James Bible. I believe this book. You can get into all the textual stuff, stuff and whatever else. 99% of the extant Greek manuscripts line up with this book. Less than 1% line up with the changes that are made in the new versions. That's why you'll see not in the two oldest and best manuscripts in your footnotes in the new versions. Look it up. Uh, they're referring to Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. Uh, so according to them, the Vatican is the you know, custodian of the Word of God. 
I don't think so. Um, but understanding that this book, it's more than just mathematical, naturalistic, or, or not naturalistic textual criticism, but textual criticism. It's more than just that. The Holy Spirit, Spirit bears witness to this book, unlike any other book in history. Um, and I've answered all the questions. What about before the King James Bible was written? Yeah, all that stuff. I've answered it on my channel. I'm not going to spend time on it here. But you come and you say, okay, I believe this book, and I don't line up with this book, and I want to. I want to have the fellowship of the sufferings. I want to know that I'm saved. I'm willing to follow you, Jesus. And it doesn't matter to me anymore what it will cost me. And boy, I got saved. And all of a sudden, family started to turn against me. Uh, a lot of my family doesn't even, they don't even know I exist. They get married, they're having children and all kinds of stuff. Where's uh, Brian at? I, I don't know, whatever. He's just a nut right now. Preaching to a camera out in the woods or something. <laughs> okay. Um, and you go through it too. That's why I'm saying this so that you can relate. So that you'll know that you're not alone in this. You have friends turned against you. You lose jobs. People casting out your name as evil. Treating you like you're some kind of a monster or whatever else. Yeah, you're suffering for the Lord. And I thank God that I got away from that modern professing church. I'm not, glad I'm not a modern professing Christian anymore. Because if I was, I'd be going to hell while professing that I'm going to heaven. And I'd have to stand there before the Lord and try to tell him how good of a guy I am. I'm going to stand before Jesus Christ and tell how good he is and how good his word is. And don't tell me that you can talk to me about Jesus Christ and you reject any book down here on this earth as being God's Word. Not just the King James Bible. Modern professing Christians, they reject all Bibles as being perfect. They're all just, just translations and, and we, only the original Greek and Hebrew. You say, do you have access to the original autographs? Well, no. Um, well, then what's the perfect Word of God? Had one tell me the one time, no such book exists. That's a mistake. That's a big mistake. So, uh, please be challenged by this. Please examine yourself if you're a modern Christian. You can get mad at me. You can call me whatever you want. You know, get in line, take a number. I'll get to you eventually. <laughs> or whatever. Your turn will come up to attack Brian Denlinger. That's fine. Whatever else. On, on uh, your part, he's evil spoken of. You know, the Lord... On my part, he's glorified because I'm standing for the Word of God. That's why you attack me. But uh, if you want to just shut this ministry off and go away and you know, who cares, whatever, okay. Then pick up a King James Bible and make sure that you're right with this book. You don't have to watch me to get right with Jesus Christ, but you do have to be right with the Lord that's written about in this book right here. And if you're not, you're going to end up in hell. So uh, that will be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you take action today. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off another day. Make sure of your eternity. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Hatton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.